Hey, Ryan, why don't you pull up Amazon's margins real quick? Well, if oh, oh! yeah, I'd have more of a grin on my face than Stephen Hawking on Epstein's Island. I I'm off as a smug cock when he said that. Wow, physical philosophy, you, you're not very smart at all. You, yeah, you screw up, cash flow kings. <laughs> Dissector, you are an idiot. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. It's Saturday. It's 8 p.m. Eastern. And fiscal, it's been a pretty eventful week, to say the least, here for us on the Cash Flow Kings Live. It's and what a way to recap it. <clears throat> well, um, turns out I'm not very smart at all. <laughs> You're not very smart at all, in fact. Um, hello, everybody. Welcome in. If you didn't know, you didn't get the gist already, we're trying something new, and it's actually working a little bit here. So we hired a new slate. I mean, a new worker for us. <clears throat> And essentially, he told us possibly if we started or did a little pregame show, you could almost say about five, ten minutes earlier, get the nice little music going, get a good little vibe. It could be potentially, you know, good for us because you guys already know on the Cash Flow Kings, we only do this for money. We we actually know nothing about stocks whatsoever. We only want your money. Yep, it's all about the money, money, money. It's all about the income, as some people say. But welcome in, everybody. And tonight, speaking of income, oh, we have a guest for you. Trust me. And I was a little taken aback. And I had to, in the pregame lobby, I, I wasn't prepared for this. And I had to bring the shades out for tonight. Fiscal, I'm sorry if I'm mogging you a little bit here, but we're going to be bringing the shades on tonight. Tonight's guest is none other than THB, the coach. Welcome in, coach. You're muted. Comer already got him. No, no, he didn't. <laughs> How's it going, guys? Glad to be on. Oh, Welcome. I'm fired up. Yeah. I've been looking forward to this episode all week. We got 22 people in here. We have a few promotions and plugs to get here first because you all, you guys already know we're going to take advantage of anything we can. First of all, follow our Twitch if you guys haven't already at Cashflow Kings. If you guys aren't, if you're on Twitch or more Twitch people, go out look over there. 
Also, we have a donate button now. So give us your hard-earned money, and we'll we'll put it into anything pretty much except yield max funds. <laughs> but that will be the topic of discussion tonight. Coach, if you'd like to introduce anything you have, you know, anything you, you know, per, you know, your channel, um, do it now because this is the best time for it. We've realized. By all means, shamelessly okay. plug away. Yeah, sure. So uh, I do cover yield max on my channel. Um, I'm not a staunch yield max like pusher. Uh, it's part of what I cover. I'm a dividend channel, mainly personal finance, but dividends do fall under personal finance and happen to get a lot of coverage on here. So yeah, THB Finance is the channel for short. Uh, we also have a podcast as well. I think we're having you on uh, in a week or so as well. Yep. So everybody be, be ready for that. I will not, I will be rated our Ryan for that show and tonight. And I'm glad to be on here. If I do half as well as your last guest, it'll be a success. Yeah, you got you got you kind of got hard shoes to fill, but I think the last yeah. week has definitely kind of pumped it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we want to get right into it, but typically with our guests, what we like to do, we like to we'll, we'll we'll simmer into things here. We got a long hour to get into. Yeah, Coach, tell us, you know, what got what got you started into investing in the first place? What's your current strategy? Um, just the general kind of landscape of things. So I learned early on that you would not really get ahead or beat inflation by just working. Mm -hmm. So I realized that you really, everybody I would say needs to invest to uh, hope to get a real rate of return and to beat inflation. Um, so I studied finance in school um, at, at two levels, actually. I did my undergrad in finance and my master's in finance, including mm -hmm. I got an MBA uh, and a master's in finance. And I started watching YouTube videos, probably like all of us, you know, we mm -hmm. start out on here, We've seen the big ones, you know, Jeremy, financial education, not that he's a credible source, but him, um, like Graham, you know, Kevin and those guys. And I started to watch some of these channels and I said, you know, I may give this a shot myself. So, nice. yeah. And I said, let me try it. So I'm about just over two years in and um, yeah, I pretty much cover all things personal finance. I've been leaning more towards dividends in the last year or so, but like I said, I try to cover everything finance related. I'm a I'm a I'm a potential finance bro too, so I can appreciate that. Awesome. Would you say Would you say finance is the right degree to go to? Because we have a few other people in the Discord link in description that are you know heavily considering a finance degree. I think so. I mean, I would say it's kind of a saturated field. Uh, what helped me to get a job uh, when I was uh, finishing my undergrad was uh, I also did. I studied some uh, MIS, which is the business version of computer science. Mm -hmm. And so that helped me get into one of the big four. Otherwise, I was on the financial advisor track, which I didn't necessarily want to do because it's yeah. a lot of sales and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm kind of I don't I'm kind of like I'm still I'm still kind of touching the surface of things. I'm mm -hmm. research seems interesting because I'm already kind of doing that with researching some of the stocks that I do, um, you know, financial planning advising that seems cool but it, it, i gotta still do a bunch of research but welcome yep. in everybody we have cg in the chat digital const g-man um by the way lincoln welcome in dan dan i was checking out your channel yesterday and here we go it begins everybody <laughs> well hey what's wrong with yield max i'm making 13k a month with yield max and defiance well we'll be 14k by may First of all, killer poet, nobody likes a bragger, okay? Ten minutes into the cash flow kings, and we can't be bragging this much. But, you know, tonight we are ready for – we're ready for it tonight, everybody. I put this title in expecting some harsh comments, and I, we all had to bring the shades out today. There are going to be some hard yep. comments and questions answered. Um, Fiscal, would you first like to respond? Because I know you've had a week, and we're going to get to that in our segment later um, with the Yield Max Funds. And you also did recently publish a video – um, actually talking about, you know, talking yeah. about why they aren't free money. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's like, does the $14,000 a month really count as making money if your net asset value erodes at the same rate? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I mean, I think you got to look at opportunity costs. I've, I've been on record for saying too, I think yield max funds, I don't, I definitely have not been fond of them. But I think there are select people as the coach here who actually understand what they're about, understand how they work, the risks involved. But unfortunately, not many people are like the coaches we've learned. 
That's true. I would ask the commenter, by the way, so if you're making that much in dividends, how much do you have invested for one thing? And what's your cost basis? And what's your unrealized gain and loss? So you Those need would be context questions. for this. Yeah. He just responds, the truth hurts. Well, <laughs> wait till we get deeper into this, killer poet. The truth does hurt. <laughs> And Lincoln comes in, the truth does hurt that you have Tesla and you're down 60% total value, hopefully uh, on your money and not margin. Yeah. So, you know. Now, does that include reinvesting the dividends or is that just price return? Yeah. He says, you have to maintain them, of course, but what I'm making is nothing compared to a lot of people. Mm. Nobody likes a brag or killer or poet. Mm. You know? Let's let's flaunt our, flaunt our ego here a little bit. <laughs> hey, there's a lot of people with fake net worth too, and we'll get into that. But coach, would you you like to talk a little bit about your view on these income ETFs? Me and Fiscal on the Cash Flow Kings, we kind of typically stay away from it, but I wanted to have you on because you're way more experienced in this realm of things and you actually do own some. Mm -hmm. I do. So what what got me into them to begin with, if we go back a year ago, um, I was looking at the chart on Tesla stock and I was looking at the chart on Tesla and I followed it for about a month. I want to say it was March of 2023. And it was tracking almost identically with Tesla and it was paying annualized a 70% dividend. So I thought, let me check this out. And I started getting comments in my audience, hey, cover this fund, cover this fund. So I make a video on it and it blows up compared to my other videos. Because before I started covering this, I it was hard for me uh, on as a YouTuber. Like it, it took, me, took me a good while to really get going on YouTube. And then all of a sudden these funds come in, I start covering them, the people like them. I'm like, wow, it seems... My first reaction was too good to be true. But by the time we got to last summer, those a lot of those funds were up in total value. So they were going up. There was a point that a lot of us were probably up 20% and we were getting the dividends. But after that, it was all downhill, especially for Tesla. And it's absolutely in the crapper today, as we well know. And look, I'm not here to crap on any investment or index fund and i actually i'm a big proponent of you know short-term performance really doesn't mean anything but in this instance it does kind of um mm -hmm. because it's such a you know let's be honest nobody here is buying tesla to hold for 40 50 years um i mean some of the people in other channels are hey you never <laughs> <clears throat> or there's I'm people, talking to the people with brains, okay, Fiscal? Our audience, we love our audience. The, my problem is that there seem to be a lot of people thinking they're going to just park like 30 grand in Tesla and retire. Yeah. So when I do my videos, I talk about the yield. I do the annualized yield and all of that. And I point out in the video that, you know, this is probably not going to sustain over time. You know, the nav's going to erode. I point all of that out. But I do the titles and stuff like that. I, I word them as it is mm -hmm. with the yield. Just like today, we've got this new fund family, Roundhill, that's doing a similar strategy. So I said, you know, huge dividends in the thumbnail and the title. But I cover it truthfully. Yeah. So I hope. Yeah. Yeah. That's the YouTube game. I've realized. Mm -hmm. um, you have a you gotta, lot of. You got to hook them. Otherwise, they're not going to get the education. Right. Yeah, that's 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 one thing as a creator you definitely learn you know there is that there's got to be a balance between i think i'm appreciating clickbait and these titles more because mm -hmm. i feel if you actually have like it's unfortunate but if you actually have like valuable content and you're just not very good you know i don't want to say not good but you're truthful in some of the like, like title and thumbnail you're not the flashiest or you don't have you know i don't want to say charisma but you know what i mean just if you have, it's on, unfortunate, the educational content doesn't get the recognition it deserves, which right. is the sucky thing about finance YouTube. So coach, you, ha you've had a lot of these, um, fund managers on your channel recently, which is actually something I think is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Would you care to share with the audience, some of the managers that you've had on your channel recently? Yeah, I've interviewed the Yieldmax fund manager four times, Jay Pestricelli. Uh Recently, I had Sylvia Jablonski of Defiance. Of course, that was interesting on Monday. Um, that was a saga. I was there for yeah, it. I, right, right. So her staff somehow didn't coordinate that she had another. I, get, I heard she was on Fox Business, which I can totally understand her going on Fox Business instead of my channel. That's a little more important, I would say. <clears throat> um, but yeah, so we got her on Thursday instead. And then we had on the Curve Funds people yesterday. So three so far. We're trying to get them all on. 
I think it's really interesting that they're coming to like actual like smaller channels too, like relative and finance YouTube. Where like they're coming on to channels with, you know, 4K, 8K. I saw Citizen of the Year had one on, mm-hmm. and I, I've heard rumors that they're actually in the discords. We got a few spies in there. I Ooh, think that's. I be. think yeah, I've heard I've heard rumors, but I think it's it's kind of cool. I don't own any of them. Um, Fiscal, I don't know if we'd ever have any of them on the cash flow kings. It's it's like not our area of expertise. We're open to have conversation with anybody, but you know, income ETFs and these high yield, we're not high yield dividend warriors here on the channel. <laughs> yeah, <but> not... <laughs> yeah, but I, guess, I think it's pretty uh, cool. Yeah, I mean, I guess like the question I would have for people that buy the funds is like if you understand the option strategy and think it's viable, like why not just do it yourself and not pay the 1% fee to yield max? That's where I'm getting myself. Like, why just not sell cash secured puts and do it yourself? What's the point of even owning the fund? And I think it's honestly kind of crazy how like truthful and transparent a lot of these fund managers are too. Yeah. Like yeah. Jay said it was a four and a half out of five on the risk scale. Exactly. Some of the way, some of the way some of these people are acting, you wouldn't think there's any risk involved at all, which right. I think is honestly pro- props to the fund managers. Cause they're, they're kind they're of like uh, they're like the growth investors. They're you know they're like the growth investors. You know, trying to trying to tell the people there's actually risk with it, and you probably shouldn't be having your net worth in it. But well, that's another. Yeah, t- <laughs> yeah I de- like I think my main problem is just the people that think they can all in on Tesla and retire and never worry about money again. It's like right. I don't. I just don't. I just really really doubt that that's the case, and I'm worried for those people. Yeah, you can't just go on vacation and forget about it. You may come down or come back to a position that's lost 50%. That vacation that vacation doesn't seem so passive income free money dividends anymore. Nope. Dividend dude comes in and says the dividend payments have been going down payment after payment extremely consistently as well as the price over the long term. Killer Poet responds, dividend dude, my payments are higher and lower on any given month. This monthly is just play around money, gravy money. That's what I do with it. I'm not depending on them. Killer poet. I've two warnings already. The bragging level, it needs to be, it needs to be limited, killer poet. Don't make everybody else in the chat feel bad with your monopoly bucks potentially. But yeah, it's just I think there's a base of shareholders for these yield max and other funds as well as just well, to that commenter's point, so I can see 10, maybe 20% allocation of the overall net worth into dividend funds, speculative stuff like that, but certainly not everything. And that's what I always preach yeah. on my channel. Yeah. Yep. So how do you, how did you go about getting in contact with some of these fund managers? Because I find it really fascinating, honestly, when you have like executives from other companies uh, we saw Joseph Carlson at the Vici CEO on, so maybe one day we'll get somebody on the Cash Flow Kings. But mm-hmm. how, did you just see other finance channels getting in touch with them, or how, how did that process go? So I'm curious to hear about that. Honestly, the first time uh, that I got Jay on, it was a subscriber of mine that put us in touch, and he kept saying, "You should get this guy on. You should get this guy on." And he emailed me, and mm-hmm. then we scheduled a live stream, and he was a great fund manager to interview. And so then I kept on having him on. And then I realized how many other fund managers were open to making appearances. And then so I started trying to get a lot of them on. But now I see a lot of other channels doing this too. So it's going to kind of become a horse race to who can get who on first. Like I saw one channel has like a weekly uh, schedule now with Sylvia of Defiant. So that's going to be interesting. That's crazy. Yeah. I, I think I think a lot of it's probably just trying to get more like – the risk exposure you could or like the risk the message of across because yeah we'll get into it there's a lot of people who don't understand the risks right dripping back into the yield doesn't sound dripping back into the yield don't sound like depending on them Make, meaning that you need yield at all just a waste of money hmm. i can see where he's coming from on that because what's the point if you have yeah. to reinvest every cent just to get a positive return, just buy the index. If the principal is going down. Yeah, because mm-hmm. I'm seeing a lot of people who are in their like 20s and 30s who are buying this fund who thinks it's free money and it's... They think like, they're going to retire early. And, and I, the thing. Yeah, you can't really shortcut it. You have to put in the work. That, that's my yeah. message really to anyone. And there's a lot of people that are at an older age that just want out of their job and they look yeah. at this as a quick way out of the job. 
And I mean, there's safe ways to do this. Like look at SVOL. SVOL has been steady. It pays maybe 18%, but it's a lot right. safer. The nav doesn't yeah. fluctuate nearly as much. Yeah. You know, I, I tried to tell people like, hey, if it was really this easy to get like 80% yield and there was like no downside at all, Buffett would just put all of Berkshire's cash into that instead of Treasuries. It, it's Beffy. Exactly. It's Beffy fiscal. It's Warren Beffy. Warren Beffy. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's, it's Warren Beffy. Yeah, I even dividend dude says even putting ten percent yield max is bad. He would al- he personally this is dividend dude the read analysts everybody he would allocate zero percent for it. I think it's really situation to situation. I personally just not, I'm never touching it. I'm because I'm eighteen. I don't need the money. I'm not going to Vegas anytime soon. But a thing that I constantly you know point back to in my videos is the performance of the S and P five hundred versus you know yield max or vu versus yield max and it's like a total return even too like if you're including the 80 percent dividend yield in some of these you know it's plus 10 percent for the yield max funds and for you could be getting you know if you bought in maybe in the fall or a better time you obviously don't want to time the market you could be getting a 30 or 40 percent return you could have so much more you know money if you're you know looking for play around money yeah s p nasdaq nasdaq did like over 40 percent over yep. the last year yeah, so there's definitely better return to be had in the. Or you know, if you, um, if you really love Tesla, you could just buy Tesla and sell covered calls. Exactly right. If you want, if you want that extra yield, <clears throat> it's hard though. You got to put research into it, fiscal. It's too hard. But you know, the the thing is, I think a lot of the people going gonzo on these funds maybe don't have <clears throat> don't have the money to get a hundred shares of Tesla. Exactly. And so they think this is again a shortcut, which, like you said, you can't shortcut it. Mm-hmm. All right, we got Parker coming in asking how exactly do these yield max funds work? Coach, or both of you can answer this really good. I want to go to Coach first. Yeah, so what they do, they don't own any of the underlying. They use options to mimic the underlying. So they have what they call a synthetic position, usually a call and a put that's to some variation out of the money. A lot of people are complaining that they're too far or not far enough to harvest enough premium. So they don't own the actual underlying and they're generating premium based on that synthetic position. And as the stock drops, like in the case of Tesla, the premiums drop as well. And so therefore the dividends drop Mm -hmm. unless it starts running back up, which hasn't happened. Yep. Um, He asks the, the yield is income generated from the options. Correct. Yes. Uh, killer poet comes in another good thing. The money is taxed as income. So funny thing yesterday of the three fund managers I've had on one of them finally mentioned tax, which is a first. Wow. And that's a big point. Cause yes, they are in most cases taxed as ordinary income. Which is why it's again, I'm just another reason I'm not personally touching it. Cause mm-hmm. you see that, believe it or not, guys, when you get your 70% dividend yield next month, don't look at the taxes. Well, if you don't yeah. look at the taxes, you'll be happy, but you know, you're not going to be. What's really bad is if you didn't like tax loss harvest at the end of last year, and then you owe tax on the dividends you got and your position's down like 30% and you've got to pay tax on the dividends you got. Yeah. That's no fun. Digital yeah. cuts comes in just by companies with that, of tobacco companies and you want a high yield and it has to be done with it. Yep. I think that's a valid short term. Yeah, like exactly. your channel covers mostly uh, safe dividend stocks, right? Yeah, yeah, not like you're crazy, not like the two percent growth rates. I'm more of like yeah. dividend growth focus, but yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. definitely, I'm definitely not like a SoFi. You know, I'm not on that <laughs> side of the spectrum yet. SoFi, yeah. yeah. Sorry, Major Speed. I'm sorry. <laughs> but even in uh, my short Tesla video, I pointed out that it's kind of, it's almost misleading to call the income dividend income because it is. It's not, these are not distributions from a company's free cash flow. They yeah, are, exactly. these are options premiums and it's a completely different animal. That's a great point. Yes. But we are looking for income here. <laughs> yeah. SCHD this week. I don't know how much you pay attention to SCHD coach, but they recently had their reconstitution. Fiscal, yes. I'm wondering if you saw it. Coach, I'm sure you saw it too, because you cover a lot of ETFs on your channel. Do we have any general thoughts? Well, I, I didn't really care for SCHD before it. Don't really care for it now. Oh, I, the heel turn, <laughs> Fiscal. The heel turn. <laughs> I mean, I would rather just pick a few dozen stocks that 
I personally like and, you know, be done with it. Hey, when I'm when I'm going on my Vegas trip because of my SHD dividend in 10 years fiscal, I'll remember you said that. All right. My, my current $1,900 position on SCHD. But coach, do you have any thoughts on the reconstitution? Not particularly. Um, as far as SCHD, um, I always thought it pays what, like 3.4% dividend yield. Yeah. Um, so it's a safer one. I get my audience asking me to cover it all the time. And I've done a couple of videos on it, but it's not like, it's not one that overly stands out to me. I mean, it's up 54% since like 2019. So it's got a good return over that time frame, but it's not it, it's not one that like just overly stands out to me, I would say. Yeah. I was I was in a weird time with SHG because a few months ago I was considering selling it. Now I'm not going to. Um I bought a majority of my position in the low 70s and I'm just gonna let I'm just gonna kinda let it compound out. I understand that there's a good chance that it could have potentially underperformed the S P five hundred even though it was outperforming just not that long ago, but people seem to forget that. I just think it's, you know, when I think myself personally, when I'd like to start potentially using my dividends, 10, 15 years, you know, the good old Vegas trip, what could go mm -hmm. down there? You know, the, there's going to be SHD dividends needed. Um, I could foresee myself using an SHD dividend in 10, 15 years. And I, I think to rebalance that, I am also considering, and I'm coming out with this thought live, and I've never told anybody this, I am considering SCHG or SPY. That's I'm considering going another 10% of allocation that my portfolio. Cool. So what is your goal as far as being a dividend investor? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Great you ask. Um, so I started literally four years ago, probably. It's my, my anniversary. Um, so I've been in it for a while. And I've, I've at this point, I'm just kind of matured and I found the companies that I want to invest in. Uh, just buy really, really good companies, pay a fair price for them, hold for a long time, let the compounding do its work. <clears throat> and then I'm eventually not... with dip, <clears throat> sorry, fiscal, but with the oh, dividends, dude. I want to, I want to reinvest them as long as I possibly can. But if I can start using it to pay, using an occasional dividend to pay for something cool or maybe, you know, rent mortgage, I don't want to, but you know. Obviously, the end goal is to live off of them fully, but Barista Fire is the goal. Barista Fire? Cool. Yeah. 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 And uh, I'm not really a dividend investor specifically. I'm a, I'm, I guess I'm a deep value hunter. Falling He's a cigar button investor, everybody. Yeah. Cigar I'm button investor. The falling knives <laughs> method is my, I invented that method of investing. Oh, nice. Okay. He's the MPW cult leader. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I've seen MPW mentioned a lot on your Discord. Oh. We yeah. got to talk about it, Coach. What are your thoughts yeah. on MPW? The viewership's going up. 46 people in here. Smash the like button. Awesome. So let me give my quick thoughts here. Um, what I see on it, um, it's dropped a lot since 2022. So let's see. Since like since they started raising interest rates, it's down like 83% uh, from what I see. I'm just looking at my Apple stock app. Uh, but the yield is 21%. So it's got a good yield, but it's got the income. Exactly. Income. But <laughs> it's like it might be like a yield max in a way. Oh, fiscal fiscal is getting ready to respond. I, he's no. sipping on the Coke over there. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's um, I mean, that <clears throat> that yield is trailing 12 months and they did have mm -hmm. a dividend cut. So it's misleading. OK, because what I say to that, um, like if you search dividends, if you go to like a, a dividend site and then export to like a spreadsheet and sort a lot of times. And I found this like with oil companies and stuff like that, they'll be paying like a really high trailing dividend, but it's because the stock is dropping. So as a percentage, the percentage looks really high. That's what that's what I see. Is yeah. that kind of what happened? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, it, lo it looks higher than it really <clears throat> than it really is. I mean, it is still high assuming that they don't uh, cut it again mm -hmm. actually the board hasn't met on this quarter's dividend yet so we're we're all kind of waiting to see what happens there but okay. it's more the people that are really deeply invested in it it's more a play on the assets more so than the dividend because if you look at their balance sheet and you look at their price to book i mean they own hospitals so it's not mm -hmm. like it's they're not like sitting on a bunch of paper mortgage backed securities or something like some other REITs are it's yeah. mostly physical real estate. So the thought is that they had a similar price drop in 2008, 2009 ish area during that crisis. And REITs are being punished a bit right now. And 
added on top of that, they're also really heavily shorted. So there's extra downward pressure on the price. So it's kind of, yeah, it's a falling knife, but probably a deep value type situation. Or at least that's yeah, you're we- right. Yeah, it did recover in 09. And then it, it did, it was on a run up all the way until really until 2022. Yeah. Yeah. So like, we're kind of thinking that history may rhyme a little bit and this is a, this is also sort of a little bit of a crisis for certain types of uh, real estate yeah, and uh, REITs in general. Inter- mm-hmm. The interest rate situation hasn't helped them. Um, healthcare providers, because they're in hospitals, have been beaten up really bad because of in- inflation in wages for like nursing staff and stuff. Medicare and Medicaid haven't caught up to it with their reimbursement rates yet. So mm-hmm. their tenants are struggling, which leads to them struggling. And so you have this really, really bad price situation and we expect that at some point it recovers that makes sense and i think with reits also with commercial real estate i think there's a huge bubble because you know since covid a lot of people haven't returned to the office there's a lot of empty office space and whatnot and i think that is going to affect commercial reits even further as well realty not reality income everybody it's scary times out here for us investors but parker comes in again and he asks what stocks with large share price growth potential in the next 10 to 20 years which also provide de- decent yields would you guys recommend two things before we get to that we don't recommend anything here on the cash flow kings this is not financial advice get the get the lawyers in the air fiscal we can't be giving out free advice if you do want stock picks though donate us money we'll then we'll give you the real picks um <laughs> and also I would say that there's definitely a mix between like, I wouldn't go yield chasing at all. I I don't really pay attention to yield. Um, 10 to 20 years, I'd say you're probably looking for decent dividend growth. But with that said, um, a few decent stocks that I own personally, I would first off just say the buy the S&P 500 or like DGRW. But if you really, really want to get into it, I'd like Starbucks. That's one. That's my one. That's your favorite company starbucks it's up there it's up yeah. there it's up yeah. there yeah what do you think about just buying the cues like for the nasdaq Ooh. triple Q. Ah. i think that's for this guy or me either one of you oh my all issue all of you yeah mm, i don't i don't love all the companies in the magnificent seven yeah the magnificent seven so that's a big mm-hmm. issue for me holding Honestly, back. and i already own like half of it so ugh. oh okay okay i got exposure yeah. The cheap skate in me, like I can't buy something after a huge run up. Like, I think if it, there's a huge run up, I've probably missed it. Especially yeah. with Nvidia too. Like, oh I can't justify. I can't justify getting in at the top. Um, you guys want to hear a funny story about Nvidia? I'm ready for it. So I'm I trade options. It. I trade options. So when Congress passed the Chips Act, I got a bunch of call options on Nvidia, and I held them through a couple of earnings quarters and made a decent amount on it but if i had held it through like september oh my god it would have been way more way more than what i actually made on it it was painful watching it run up after i sold because i sold too soon Uh, i can imagine because um for anyone that maybe doesn't know like those are leverage so he would have gotten all of the price action per contract on bundles of 100 shares basically and Look at NVIDIA's share price and imagine how much the gain on 100 shares would be. And you had multiple contracts. Magnified so, with options. Yeah, yep. we're, not, we're not talking about a small amount of money. Probably probably as much or more than some of us make in a year. Yeah. Exactly. Speaking, speaking of NVIDIA, the leading trading performance-wise in 2023 when it comes to congresspersons was the guy from my district, Brian Higgins. And he just oh. loaded up on NVIDIA and he's up like 283%. So, and now, now he's magically retiring and taking a board on a theater downtown. So very interesting, very interesting stuff there from wow. some of our government officials here in the United States. Yeah. I've always joked. I want to run for Congress, get all the inside tips, invest perfectly. Yeah. That, then, that's, I don't know. Come back and, and be a YouTuber again. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you yeah. could hold like the discord still like during, you know, your, your while term. you're in office. Yeah. And you have like the share your buy segment in the discord and, you know, mm-hmm. sh- yeah, exactly. we, oh, yeah. we got our, we got our slave. I mean, worker in the chat, our new, the new third team member of the cash flow Kings. If you guys haven't already noticed, you aren't subscribed. If you haven't already, we have shorts coming out. This guy is, he's a guru. You could even say, so <laughs> welcome in. He's an expert in AI. He is. Yep. AI. 
15 people just came in the new chat. Um, Gen Z Investing comes in and asks, what do you guys think of this strategy? It says you don't own 100 shares of a stock. Take Meta, for example. You buy 80% of Meta stock, but also 20% of the yield max equivalent. Ooh. That's it's not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea. I've even that's heard up to 50-50. Like if you really like dividends, if well, not technically dividends, but if you really like income, it's not a bad idea. Own 50% of the underlying and 50%, not 50% in your example here, 80-20. Mm -hmm. Not a bad idea. Yeah. I just think especially for a younger person too, because I know he covers some yield max on his channel. Yeah. I think it depends how long, if you're like actually holding like meta or whatever, like long term. I don't ever advocate for buying a stock if it's a short-term investment. I think that's a good way to lose money. Um, but yeah, it depends, I think, with your goals. But it's definitely interesting. Well, see, like Meta is a company I just don't see going anywhere. It's going to be around yeah. for a while. I think it's already high, but like buying in in 2022 was a perfect time. Yeah. 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 And I, I mean, the 80-20 the example probably limits your down. It's a little bit more responsible than going all in. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. Yeah. Lincoln shares that he switched his strategy from SHG to SHG and Deidre. Yeah, I think that's solid. I think that's definitely a valid way to go for sure. I just think that the SHD hate has been undeserved recently because it's down. It's down and the dividend growth wasn't like 11% last year. Oh, DGRO. I remember covering yeah. that like a year or two ago. Yeah. It's solid for sure. Yeah. I think if you compare its performance with SHD, somebody can fact check me, but it's pretty similar. Mm -hmm. It looks like it. Yeah, but I think the one big thing from SCHD before we get to our really good topic of the night, uh, I, all right, we all know it's <laughs> what it is. And fiscal, you better you better get your voice ready for it. I think oh, uh, broad. So I was corrected today. Um, essentially, they had to sell out of the Broadcom because the yield got too low, which is unfortunate. So it's not like they had like somebody manually if they were able to hold it or whatever. But you know, it it, it sucks. But hopefully, the dividend the dividend growth will pay off. I like as that broad income. Exposure. As long as you get income, right? The growth the income. doesn't matter. <laughs> we love the income. The growth yes. investors, they over there. And everybody, <laughs> if we get a donation tonight, I will do my commerce impression. Or if we get some people on Twitch subscribing to us. Oh, a super chat or something? Yeah, we get it. We, we got it on Twitch because I, I linked my old account. So everybody follow oh, cool. us on Twitch if you haven't already because we only do this for money. But <laughs> unfortunately, this week for the Cash Flow Kings. We got copyrighted by the WWE. So our normal segment really? of... Yeah, they copyrighted That intro stuff. was awesome, by the way. Not the NWO intro. Uh -huh. um, the segment but, intro, though. Oh, yeah, okay. but we have a segment, basically, where it's the know your role and shut your mouth segment here. Oh, with the rock? Show. Yeah. Yeah. So unfortunately, everybody, that's gone. But uh -huh. we have this in supplement. Shut up, bitch! <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> well, everybody, it's our new segment. Fiscal, what a week for you. I learned some new things this week. The forefront of those being, you're not very smart. And I can't I'm not very smart at all. You're not very smart at all. <laughs> and we're going yeah. to play, play it for some people who didn't see it. Wow, fiscal philosophy, you, you're not very smart at all. <laughs> it's become like a meme in and of itself. Well, every it time is. he makes a live, there's something that, good that always comes out of it, even if you don't like his stuff. Yeah. So... The topic of the night, everybody. We the Khmer's, Khmer's, whatever you want to call them. I don't know if he has Khmer's. the respect. Yes. I don't know if he has the respect for me to pronounce it correctly. To be frank. Ah, okay. I see. But before we all share our collected thoughts on the current situation going on, Fisk, would you kind of like to share your perspective on your Sunday night? And you know, you went in the chat. You were trying to bring up some very valid points. Yeah. So, I mean, right after I made my Tesla video, he actually went live. Like very shortly after and i decided to hop in mm -hmm. and <clears throat> you know i just had I, I tried to engage the people in the chat tell them like hey you know if it was really this easy to put 30k into something and retire and you could get all this yield no drawbacks buffett would put all of berkshire's cat and they're like oh buffett does his own options though and it's like betty yeah Betty. Yeah. Okay. But like he doesn't do this strategy though. Yeah, completely you know? different strategy. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it was just it was very cult like. And anything that you say that's like disagreeing, instead of like making a point, he just either calls you an idiot or says you're not very smart at all. 
And this is our money, not your money. You don't need to save us or whatever. And it's like, gr- like granted, yes, it is their money and everything. But in his case, it isn't though fiscal because he's on margin. That's true. He is. Ouch. He is, yeah. He is deep on margin. He's got like seventy grand on margin or something. And it's on Schwab's team. money. <clears throat> yeah, it's Schwab's money. Um, I'm shocked that they're letting him keep that position open. By the way, but um, yeah, and to me, it it just like I am genuinely concerned for the people that are just tuning into this person that clearly doesn't actually understand what they're buying, like in any deep way. He just sees the nominal yield and says, "Well, I like Tesla and I like income, so I'm just putting all my money into this," and isn't really thinking about it any deeper than that. And somehow has managed to make a brand or a show out of it with thousands of subscribers. And uh, a lot of the people in there are talking about they're nearing retirement and they don't have a lot. They've got maybe 30 or 40 grand. And like they're talking about this, this is saving lives because it's letting these people retire and stuff. And it's like, it's, it's like, it's malpractice. It's yeah terrible ethics it's i i but the thing is i don't even think he's smart enough to realize that he's doing the wrong thing and possibly causing these people who don't have much to begin with to potentially flush what little they do have down the toilet and really never have any hope right and i think that would be his out like if anything did happen (laughs) along those lines um but yeah uh, i i think we see that a lot on youtube it's it's Finance is one of the highest uh, CPM niches that there are. And so, you know, it's it's very common for anyone to kind of just wake up one day and decide, hey, today I'm a finance guru. And that seems like, you know, it might have been kind of might have been what happened over there. I'm not saying for sure. But I mean, he we don't do, do it for the money, though. He don't do it for the money. He's not monetized, he says. He yeah. Unlike you, he doesn't need subscribers. I, unlike <laughs> No, unlike your YouTube channel, unlike your YouTube channel, Ryan Dangler. Dangler. You got to learn to socialize. Yeah, you got to learn to socialize. There you was know, a clip what? in that live stream where he said that at the end. Yeah, I yeah. that was I I was the thing that like separates like I don't even hate the guy. Like uh, Capital mm-hmm. Minds I was talking about on your show. Yeah. Like little kid Commer. like he talks about getting a suit. He's going to New York for the Rec Shares conference. Like it's yeah. funny listening to him sometimes, but mm-hmm. then the other the, the other half, it's like he bans, you know, he puts fiscal in the gulag. It's not good. You've both been banned from there, right? Yeah, there's uh, sure. everybody. I, I would pay attention to the show on Thursday this week. I I left on my own eventually. I I oh. didn't get any indication that I'd been banned, but they might have banned me after the fact. I don't know. Yeah, it's but you know back to the. Back to the kid calmer, you know, he's going to the Rex Shears conference, he's got his suit. You listen to him talk, it's just like it's an echo chamber in there. Mm-hmm. And there's even like sub servers too. Like, I was banned from another one today. I think I mentioned to coach, hey, you've been collecting the bands, I'm like Thanos, like the <laughs> yeah, Infinity exactly. Stones, right? No, but it's we got to have Capital Mindset on here too to talk about it because I feel like we have like a three hour podcast with the four of us just talking about it, but you yeah. know. But fiscal, Did you guys hear him when he went on Kumar's channel? It was great. He no, talked to him for like twenty minutes, and then he, he got, got kicked, kicked out. out. Yeah. He got I kicked heard, out. I heard. I heard he actually deconverted like five people. Oh yeah, he got to some people, but he he ended up getting kicked out for sure. But he was really good when he went on there for sure. Yeah. So there's like a sub server or whatever, and after I got banned from Kumar, my first stint, um, I was like invited to it. It's like this financial rough knocks or whatever, and it's yes. just like. It's a bunch of people who were banned from that server. And then right. I got banned and I don't even yeah. know what I did. I just logged really? on this morning. I'm like, oh, <laughs> but the one thing I noticed about them, and this could be a reoccurring theme with people on commerce discord or Khmer, uh, it, you know, they were in the voice chat a little too, little too much for my understanding or comprehension. And that's a, you know, we, some of these people may not have jobs, education, so we got to feel sympathy for these people, everybody. So you're talking about that's Debt Slaves Discord. Yeah. Um, yeah, he, he's actually a good guy. Um, he has a lot of former Khmer people in there and current ones. So that's what I was saying. It's like a really shared audience. So a lot of these people, yeah. they're over there, they're over here. And I think they complain to him when they see certain things being said. So yeah. just recently, he did those rules and stuff, and then he's kicked out. Like, I think he kicked out Capital Mindset, too. Yeah, Kony 2012. 
Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, it's just in- it's interesting. I don't. I'd like to get my qu- answer on how do you be in the voice chat all day. I wish I could do that. It's it's truly a talent. But you know the the calmer thing is also disturbing for another reason, which we were talking about with Beater on the Discord fiscal was. Uh, yeah. There was a show with a person who was who literally said he was disabled, right? He yeah. mentioned that he had a disability. Yeah, he, he said he I mean he you could tell by the way he sounded um that there was there was something un, <clears throat> unusual going on. And he then some point in the conversation was like, Oh, I have a disability and um you know I love the stuff you're doing, you're like a celebrity, it's so great to talk to you and stuff. But yeah, he did mention he had a disability, and like I thought, it was pretty clear from how he sounded that there was something going on. Um, and then just the fact that, like, this is an extremely vulnerable person potentially, and again, they're being convinced to put a bunch of their money into something that they probably don't have the best understanding of if they're getting their advice from Khmer. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, I've had some of my subscribers that are like really staunch yield max people that have left me and gone to him because he he does position himself as the true yield max like the staunch yield yeah. max person it, it's just like politics um, like people yeah. will reside with a politician they could be saying the most vile yeah. stuff out of their mouth but if if it's if it's what they want to hear though then mm-hmm. they'll yep. they'll go there and that's that's unfortunate is like people would rather just go to get whatever fix for the thing they want to hear rather than you know, pursue the truth for the mm-hmm. sake of pursuing the truth. It's unfortunate. Yep. So coach, what's your situation with Khmer? Well, so he popped up out of nowhere uh, from my perspective. Um, his channel has been around, I think longer than mine, but he was covering like traveling and cooking and stuff like that. And um, he decided to start covering finance and then he starts covering yield max, um, which I started covering yield max last year, probably around like, March, April, or May. And then in the summer, things started to snowball. I started to have some significant growth. And then I see his channel pop up and I start getting comments. Hey, you know, check out this Kumer channel. I was like, okay, another person covering Yield Max. That's cool. Um, and then I noticed that as I wasn't as staunch on Yield Max, I started losing people to his channel. And then his Discord just blew up. And I was like, whoa like i because i was in there and i remember like our discords were like the same size at one point then all of a sudden he blew up to like 1500 or something and then his channel started like almost catching me and i'm not gonna lie i got a little lazy over like six months or so i was only posting like once or twice a week um and then i noticed my views started dropping and stuff so i was like i started watching more i was like what the heck what's the phenomenon here i was trying to figure it out and then um, my two co-hosts on my podcast, Andre and Blake, uh, well, Blake first went on there to go on. He said, hey, you know, I think I should go in there and tell them they should hedge these positions because by November, December, Tesla really started dropping. So he goes in there, he talks to them, gives a well-reasoned argument about hedging the positions, and then he gets kicked out. And then let's see if I back up to November, when I interviewed Jay in November, I had a lot of people telling me that like I didn't do a good job interviewing Jay or something like that. And then I saw other people saying that, cause it's, this is what's fun. Okay. If you ever get the chance to go on other discords and kind of sneak in and like read about yourself from people who have never been, oh, I love before, that. it is fun. It is a blast. Um, and so I read about like, Oh, Hey, this coach guy, why is Jay even going on this guy's channel? You know? And um, Matt, who's on Kumar's discord. Oh, he no. said, oh. yeah, he said, well, I, I can't figure out why he goes on there either because he because coach constantly disrespects Jay. And I was like, how do I disrespect Jay? And he's like, oh, because you said you would sell yield max. I'm like, yeah, buy low, sell high. I want to sell Tesla if it gets back up to $18. At oh. the time, it was like 15 mm-hmm. And so Matt was in my Discord for like an hour. Someone brought him in there. They had a chat. And then I joined in. I said, yeah, I might sell it if it gets to 18 He's like, with that comment, I'm out of here. And he leaves. <laughs> <laughs> and then I didn't realize he was like Kumer's like right hand man, yeah. At the time, so I go into his Discord and I said, "Hey, does anybody or does everybody in this Discord agree with the concept of buying low and selling high?" And a lot of people said yes. And I said, "Okay," because apparently not everyone does. And so now he goes around. And he's like, "Oh yeah, Coach, you know, mistreated me and this and that." And I'm like, "Whatever, slander. I didn't do anything, but whatever." So that happened. Um, Blake got kicked out, and then. 
Andre got kicked out for saying some of the same things. And then we did a portfolio review of his portfolio and it's actually on Andre's channel. Yeah. And then a lot of his people got pissed. Oh, and then they got really mad at me for going on there. Cause some of my former followers that remember me, like always talking about yield max and stuff. And so they got mad and then he came out with a follow-up and he said, I'm deeply honored, deeply honored that they, you know, covered my portfolio this way. And then he started kicking out a lot of people that were subscribed to me. So like dissector, you know, he kicked him out. He said, wait, have the wait, clip. We have a drinking game going tonight. We have a drinking oh. game. Going. Dissector, you are an idiot. There we go. There we <laughs> yeah. go. That will never get old. And if you it hear the never. whole clip, the whole like two minute clip on that is epic. Yeah. We'll, if you listen we'll to it sometime. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, so, so a lot of people started getting kicked out and, um, one of his like really hardcore fans, I said I wouldn't say this anymore because I since kind of made up with the person, but um, he has his own YouTube channel. He's like a jazz instructor slash rapper or something. And um, so he was following me back in the summer. So I had him on like I, I gave him a platform I'm like, oh, you're a fellow YouTuber. I'll have you on for a little while. I was nice to him and stuff like that. Well, he ended up going on to Kumer because he said that I'm not a true yield maxer and stuff. And then he starts like trashing me on there. And I'm like, OK whatever and at some point i i did another video where i pointed out hey look remember i had you on i highlighted his comments where he said wow coach you're cool you read everyone's comment you know you're a stand-up guy and this and that i'm like so i don't know what changed anyway so all that happened and you know there's been some some more drama and stuff like that in that regard so I that's think, kind of the story i think the big part of it is like commerce just kind of dumb like naturally i think that's a huge part of it because he has these He's a very, you know, yes, man. I was watching the stream the other night and some guy, I, I don't know, it might've been a troll, but he's like, calmer, I will ban anybody that stands in our way. And he made him a mod and immediately, oh, really? yeah, I swear to God, oh, wow. he, he, made him a, like... he made him a mod and he's like, but congratulations, you're a moderator. The thing that's concerning to me is you said, the guy said you weren't a true yield maxer and therefore exactly not, like, oh, like oh. that, that's cultish. Like, yeah, I don't care how you slice it. Like, as much as people in my Discord love MPW, we would never kick somebody out for not being a true MPWer. You yeah. Know, it, just, it just would not cross our mind. There's tons of people we have that don't, that don't, that aren't convinced and don't buy it. And we yeah. like to have those discussions because it helps us flesh out our thesis. Yep. So your commenter here just raised a very interesting oh. point for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, my, I call him Monopoly Bucks Matt. Um, you know, it's... it's <laughs> out of here saying got nine figures, figure, son. He, he's like this guy that sounds like John Donaher. And if anybody knows who that is, Australian, <laughs> Australian guy. But he's... he The way I got familiar with him was I, me and uh, Dividend Dude were basically on the Discord. We were just trying to, you know, say, you know, the most common arguments as we've talked about the entire show. And Matt was at the forefront of it. He's like, come back to me when you have a portfolio with nine digits in it. And it's like, shut. Uh, and he was like talking about all, all this wisdom and how he's got these Teslas and, and it turns out it's all fake. And it's been like completely contradicted. And I, I think it's pretty funny. He's got the model series Hyundai. Yeah. He's got a, he's got a, he's got a nice bucket. We'll say yeah. that. And I'm not against driving bad cars. Anybody. Oh yeah. Of course not. Yeah. If you're saving money, I'm going cheap first. I'm getting a car this summer. I'm not buying I'm not buying the Tesla, everybody, unless you, you ah. know, smash the like button, buy the merch, do everything, right? Unless your channel explodes, and then from the yeah. ad revenue, you can buy a Tesla. And I'll yeah. take a picture in front of it for my course. Now, but that ad revenue, that's income. That's yeah. That's income. We got to well, get it, another soundbite of that, the income. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, he, he claims he has, like, all, you know, seven digits. Um, essentially, Roberto, he's one of the higher-ups um, in the cult. You know, I he's think like, he runs it. Uh, honestly, I think yeah. he's running it. Yeah, I I can't foresee Comer being in there all day. He's the brains behind the scenes or whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, he's he's getting his five minutes of fame. You could say he puts big numbers on spreadsheets. Then he has a bad day and he lets five million swing in his portfolio because of Tesla. Yeah, it's just like it's a little unbelievable. Um, you know, mm -hmm. Matt, you know, so that, Matt, I don't know. I don't know if I'd give you any money. You probably needed to come on the cash flow kings, but yeah, <laughs> that, that's an interesting dialogue in itself. 
Well, that's another thing too. I tried to have Kumar on when he first started. Oh, we did too. Was, yeah, that I was offered. a misunderstanding because I, I make a joke. I'm I, I'm very matter of fact. Sometimes probably too matter of fact, and I have a dry sense of humor that gets misunderstood yeah. a lot of times. But I was like, oh, you just started. Like, I don't know if I can have you on or not. And I was joking, and some people took it really. You know, they got oh. really butt hurt, took it seriously. And um, but honestly, I don't think he wants to go on anyone's channel because he's had as many opportunities to interview fund managers. As, oh, yeah. As anyone. And yeah. I just don't think he wants to for whatever reason. No. Well, so <clears throat> when I was in his chat, I did say like, hey, you know, instead of you calling me, um, you know, saying I'm not very like I and I said, like, hey, you're welcome to come on alive and discuss this or debate it with me anytime you mm -hmm. want. And he's like, oh, I don't need to debate you. <laughs> you, you can win the debate. You can win the debate. <laughs> that's fine oh, really it's yeah. like and it's like well yeah i would but like i think it would be worthwhile for i think the it's the, the debate's not for me to win it's not what it's about it's for the benefit of the audience and having an open discussion yeah i'm yeah. trying to find i'm trying to find the tweet right now where we're we offered to have him on but he, he essentially just played that he's a nobody game we've you know we, he said that with me too yeah he's a yeah. nobody he doesn't yeah. know anything and this is bringing me to the next point the level of contradiction at this guy, I I genuinely think he doesn't know what's coming out of his mouth. Sometimes it's like his mouth is five seconds ahead of its brain, and he'll like say some very he like the other day there was a clip, and he's like, "Why would I report the Wine Dangler show? I don't know who that is. I don't know." He, he's like talking about he doesn't know. Well, who he I did am. a video on you. That he, he does a video on he does yeah. a video on me behind his you know channel memberships for Matt, the one yeah. channel member. Yeah, and behind the memberships, but I thought he didn't need the money. He doesn't Nothing need the money. Him. So then he made the video public for like two minutes and then he deletes it. So I'm mm. like, oh, well, well, I think I he also said he it. wasn't, I think he said he wasn't monetized, which is, you can That's prove funny. that to not be the case. Yeah. And yeah. then the video, I, that's what first got me introduced to the guy. Cause I, you know, he made a reaction video. I wanted to at least see it. Yeah. So I, I joined the disc room, like make the video public. He made it public for like two minutes and I made it about really? like two minutes before he deleted it. And, mm. The first thing I made the, the one of the first statements I made in the video was dividends are not free money and this is not free money. He's like, and the, he said, "What do you mean by that? It's put. It looks pretty free to me." I'm like, "Oh no!" So oh, you saw no. the video. I saw about probably twenty percent of it before he deleted oh. it. I was at the oh. gym. I just Dang. tried to reload it and it was magically gone. So yep. It, it's and then we got banned like. 24 hours later so the, <laughs> the calmer dialogue goes on but uh, honestly like i don't even like hate the guy like i think it's more of his like the cult like followers or whatever because you know yeah kid calmer is you know capital mindset put it like you see him you know and you see him talking and he's getting all excited you know it, and he i genuinely think he's not smart enough to realize what he's doing is you know disgusting to be honest yeah, it's going to be interesting to see where things go in the next like year or this so. This brings me to my next point. Yeah. We currently have a betting thing on the Discord. The winner gets a discount to merch. And it's basically, do you think that Commer, how, when do you think it's going to burn out? Because we all know it's, it's destiny, basically, with the way that they're talking and if they keep investing the way they are. When do you think there, a potential burnout could happen? Because we currently have a date at January 1st, 2025. It's short term, oh, okay. I know, but yeah, there are several things that could happen. Um, from what I see, the way he uploads videos, um, he seems really dedicated to it. Like he uploads multiple times a day. And I actually started just ramping up my schedule just within the last two months because I was only posting maybe once or twice a week. But uh, full disclosure, I just felt I had the sense that like I can't I can't be surpassed by this channel. You know, so I started like really ramping up and last month I had a record. I had like 50,000 views on the channel, but I mean, it took everything, like every ounce of effort uploading multiple times a day and stuff. And I still, if you, you can go to socialblade.com and you can see the views, like some of these, like he's getting like 120,000 views a month. Well, I think it's a lot of it is people who are just like, just watch it like in entertainment. Like, right. Like you, you guys, don't own it. It's just yeah, like I was saying, you guys are actually helping his views. Yeah, like going back and sharing and stuff. It's fun. I mean, it's it's oh, funny it's for sure. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. But I think that is a lot of it for sure. But I see him. I think he'll keep trying. Um, the ad revenue gets to be pretty good when you get that amount of views and stuff. Yeah, probably like six or seven hundred bucks a month at that level, huh? It might yeah. be even more. It, it could be closer to a thousand. 
Yeah. Well, he he, he better get a good suit for that that Rex Shears conference. Yeah. <laughs> Matt is low-key goaded. He has a Tesla Model S, <laughs> not a Honda. Oh, his, really? It really is oh, a Model S. So, That's so right. Model Y is on order. And his mm-hmm. BMW M3 is the weekend car. Car He's, for every he, day of the week. He, he lives very humbly. He doesn't want the $100 million net worth through his head. That's what I'm yeah. saying to the guy earlier who was talking about his net worth. Mm-hmm. Dan comes in and says, I know how it ends. Commer question at time. The Charles Schwab margin policy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that'll be funny when. The margin the, call? Yeah. The, Charles the, Schwab, you're not very smart at all. Oh, he <laughs> I can them. only imagine the phone call with them because he's going to have to talk to them. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, you're, you know, we hit, you know, you're about oh, uh, roughly $70,000. Uh, we're very sorry, but, you know, set, set up the payment. It's not real. He's gonna like think it's like a prank or something, and then the people are gonna yeah. show for this. Oh, too funny. You're banned. <laughs> you, nope, I'm gonna call the cops. Did you what? see? He did a video where he said that Schwab sucks basically because his investments are rated an F for most of them. Yeah. <laughs> so he's like, this is why people are leaving Schwab in droves. They, uh, I mean, all the, all, no, the Schwab people, ratings don't really mean much, really. Yeah. He, said, he said something about Weeble the other day that was just mind-blowing, about how you didn't have to have the Social Security for Weeble and how illegal immigrants could buy stocks. He's like, that's very good, very good, very good. <laughs> I, I like Weeble. It's like, yeah, oh. I didn't hear that one. That's funny. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't imagine many sponsors wanting to work with him. I mean, the mm-hmm. views I, are I bet he gets the emails. I views are views. Them. I've gotten fake sponsors that have reached out to me. I've got it's weird. I I got like do you know Moomoo? Yes. I mm-hmm. got that, but I'm I don't want to do it because it seems extremely FTX ish. Yes. There's something on the way, and hopefully for the cash flow kings here soon. I think we're I think we're in negotiable rates fiscal. I think if we got into a phone call, we we give them our premium plan, we go in with some confidence, we rock the shades. I think we got an easy five bag. Five bag. Easy five bagger. Easy yeah, five We had to re- everybody who's in here right now smash the like button because we recently had to just blow 180 on the StreamYard subscription. So you know, if help us out, you know, smash the like button, subscribe, give us. Oh, money you're using it. StreamYard Premium. That's why you have like different a different yeah. outlay and stuff. I we, use the free one. I'm so cheap. I just use the free one. We had to. We we bring the viewers quality here, and we, we also we wanted to production we value will help us grow faster. Yeah, That's we're bringing in, we're bringing income. And we also, I like playing the clips as well, and it lets us do the clips. So that's that's like the only reason I love doing it. So you edit all those in live? Uh, I have like a thing to my right, and it just lets me basically play. I already have them all preloaded, but I did have to like edit them in iMovie mm-hmm. and MPW. Oh, cool. or, yeah. Yeah. Format. Dan comes in. Uh, so Coach Guy, do you repent your Yield Max content I covered a few months ago? You really like Yield Max at that point, and I covered your channel. You covered my channel? When was this? Oh. So I still hold Yield Max. I've had the fund managers on. Um, I'm looking at paring down some of my positions and stuff. But like I said, and I've always said from the beginning, uh, no more than like th- this type of strategy yeah. should be no more than 10 or 20% of the yeah, overall Yeah, I was going to ask what's your allocation. Yeah. Uh, not ten, Not even 10%, honestly. Yeah, that's – yeah. See, people, I refer to people like the coach when I talk about like the 1% of yield max shareholders who actually know what they're doing and know how, you know, collecting off options premiums works. And, you know, you got to, you got to know your stuff. And unfortunately, there appears to be, and capital mindsets of this, and I didn't, um, a lot of the shareholders are lazy and don't work. So I, I didn't say that capital mindset then. Well, and that's the thing. It's like an easy way for income is how it's viewed. In, in a lot of cases, yeah. you know, it's like, especially again with the people with disabilities, like they don't know yeah. if a dividend is where you see it's 80% dividend yield. They, yeah. if they know and, what a dividend is in the first place, that's awesome. But you gotta, so, do, you know, it's funny. Like I'm, I'm actually 90% sure the comment of mine that triggered him to say, I'm not very smart at all is when I said, there's no free lunch in the market. Oh, yeah. it had to be. Cause then your, your comments got deleted like halfway through, right? You got banned halfway. Um, they they might have. I I didn't really. I didn't stick around too long after he basically said he wasn't willing to have a discussion. Like, what's the point if they're not willing to have a conversation? Mm-hmm. Well, you're not very smart. You're not what. You're not worthy of the discussion. Yeah, 
I mean, I'm sure. So you could go back in my video history. You could probably find some clips where I've said, wow, this looks awesome. But that was my initial reaction when I saw that Tesla was tracking for a couple months with Tesla and that it was having those, you know, if you do it on a 12 month uh, basis, 70 percent. That was my initial reaction at first. So I'm sure somebody could pull up a clip of that one day if they can get through the other hour or whatever on some of those live streams. Yeah, we have our editor coming in and saying he's tempted to make clips comparing his yield. <laughs> his yield max is just a VGT. Do it to Vu or Spy, honestly, at this point. I hate picking out short-term performance, but they've been doing so well recently. It would just make it look that much better. But he was talking about, I put it in my video, he was talking about like how it, you know, saves, you're going to get, you know, it was talking about, I forgot what the exact point was, but in my video, I just put up the S&P 500 performance compared to, and it was like minus 11% versus yeah, 45 you can easily do that in Seeking Alpha. Yeah, take the S&P and yeah. then take the total return and it definitely lags yeah dan says he covered tesla and it came up in your research his research so that's true that's how a lot of people found me like a year ago when this was a new topic i was one of the first ones that actually started covering it yeah so i'm not gonna lie i mean it, it, the it OG. got views yeah. yeah it got views yeah sometimes you gotta run with it with yeah. the mpw for us on here now the yield max hopefully yeah. uh Cowbo asks a, opinion on Divo as a credit card option or a CC option, right? a covered uh, call covered option, call, call option. Jesus Christ. So let's look at it. Um, D I V O. And none of this is advice, by the way, I usually, for most of my investment decisions, I don't know if you guys follow me really close, but I'd consult the, I call it the advanced financial forecasting equipment, <laughs> also known as the eight ball. <clears throat> Anyway, so Devo, that's a joke, of course. That's, you know, dry sense of humor. Um, Devo is 38.70. So let's see. Um, it depends. So you can do like what they call a poor man's covered call where you own the leap and then sell calls against it. Or you would have to own at least 100 shares of the stock to do the calls on it. Um, one that I like for harvesting premium that I did like a week ago was, is actually marathon digital holdings, um, mm -hmm. for puts. That's been a good one because if you do get assigned, it's not like too much money in the whole, in the whole portfolio. It's not, it's not that expensive. Yeah. Yeah. But I would recommend if you use E-Trade at all, E-Trade's like not one of my favorite brokers. It used to mm -hmm. be, but not anymore. But they do have a good tool where you can go into the options tab and you can play with different strikes and different expirations. And you can actually see what premium you would get. He meant in comparison to a holding like Jeppy. Jeppy has been more stable for sure. Um, in comparison to hold like a Jeppy, like I mentioned SVOL. I think SVOL is very stable. Um, Jeppy is a more stable one. I mean, it's only fluctuated in a couple of years, like four or five bucks. Yeah. So, yeah. Now, I like this new fund by RexShare. It's called Feppy. Feppy is actually looking really good. It's a Magnificent Seven fund, mm -hmm. and um, it's paying a lower, well, we call it a dividend, but it's really a premium repayment. But it's paying a lower, a lower rate, but the NAV is actually going up. Hmm. Me yep. and Fiscal are big Altria guys here in the channel. Yeah, you know, we, we buy our Altria at thirty nine, forty dollars. Mm -hmm. Sit on that yield until it goes up back to sixty. Yeah, that's a classic dividend play for sure. And, and everybody, by the way, dividends are not free money. Believe it or not, they are not. That, that is definitely correct. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right. Lastly, we have one question from our Discord. As per usual, ask us on the Discord. Cash looking viewer questions. The sub forum. Go ask away. Um, but it, been, it comes from Beater Stocks, um, who has some pretty devious things in mind, who's recently said this week for Comair. So keep an eye out. Um, includes reporting. But he asks, what are our most degenerate plays? Fiscal, would you like to start? Oh, man. Hard for me to even uh, narrow it down to just one. <clears throat> um, so back in the day, I bought uh, Wish stock because there was a rumor that Amazon wanted to buy them for $15 billion. If, if 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 we're talking like current or all time stuff, all all time it's tattooed chef easy. I own I three say, yeah. three shares yeah. of tattooed chef, and I've we're not going back to the dark side. Yeah, but on the flip side, one that worked out, I, I bought a few hundred bucks worth of AMC, and it like yeah. eleven x. So <laughs> oh, oh during so the close. meme stock the meme stock run up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah. I I did a lot of like silly stuff back then, but um. 
I mean, I, I made out okay from it, but like I learned a lot of wrong, <laughs> wrong lessons. I will say before yeah. the meme stock run up, I wanted, I was considering like when I began my investing, you know, career or whatever mm -hmm. in 2020, before the whole run up, I was concerned buying GameStop because they were going to lace the PlayStation five and Xbox series X's. And that was just my logic. And if I would have made that investment, I would have been up a lot of money today. Actually, yeah. when in reality, it probably would have bought like 50 bucks worth and I make like 600, but still would have been nice. Mm -hmm. I was going to say for me, either Smile Direct Club or Fubo TV. Oh, Fubo TV. You know, if Jeremy owns one of your stocks, I think it's a bit of a negative thing. Like it, with Target, yeah. it worked out, unfortunately, and mm -hmm. it's kind of a price you got to pay, but Nike isn't doing too good. We want to talk about Nike before we head out of here. We can. Nike was down this week, Fiscal. Ooh, oh, they were no. down around six, seven percent after earnings. Apparently, the direct to consumer is not looking too good for them, uh, and they're bringing the metalmen back once oh, they again. Did tank. Oh, that that's oh, gotta yeah. be good for Foot Locker, then, huh? Yeah, well, John, the another Jeremy holding. Jeremy owns Nike, so he's he's getting all of them. But no, sell whatever think, Jeremy holds. <laughs> I know it's a tough yeah. thing with like some of the companies. Yeah, so with Nike, it's a weird one in my portfolio because I only own 150 bucks worth of it. And I bought my main position at 140 in January 2021. So it's a little rough. Oh. I do think it's getting near fair value though. And if it gets like $90 below 90, I'll probably buy some more. One thing that I think will happen once the Fed starts cutting interest rates, we're going to get back to an environment where all stocks just run up regardless. So we might see some of these recover. I think yeah. especially dividend stocks though, because yeah. It's hard to buy a stock with like a 2% yield when you can get 5% risk free from treasuries. Exactly. That's how a lot of that's how a lot of especially like I would say pension funds and stuff view it and mm -hmm. a lot of people that are closer to or in retirement probably see it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right. We are at the 1 hour and 16 mar minute mark of the show. So this is our 2 minute warning. Any last comments, questions, concerns for Coach, me, or Fiscal? We'd like to give you guys any opportunity, but this has been a very strong show. I think it may be our highest viewed show yet, Fiscal. Awesome. We're like ranging in the high 40s throughout the entire night. This one is pretty close to last week for sure. So um, I'm glad we didn't get a dip after that yeah. tough act to file. Last week was a banger, and this one looks like just as much of a banger. On par with echoes from above. That's awesome. Yeah, if yeah, Tamir I mean, ever came on the show, that would that would be like it would now, never have more. If he got you more views than I did, I'd be really hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, half of the half of the people are probably from his channel here right now. Well, we yeah. share audience too, so I'll get yeah. I'll probably lose subscribers actually because we share uh, we share viewers. Sorry, right, uh, no. Roberto says. He, Roberto asked the real questions on here too. Coach, you're on death row. What's your final meal? Oh, that's a tough one to to consider. Um, probably like a good steak dinner. That's actually the steak. default if you don't choose. By the way. Oh really? Oh, yeah, wow. it's like um, there is like a there's a channel that actually has shorts that covers yeah. like death row like famous last meals and stuff. And mm -hmm. the people that don't choose, you get um, typically a steak dinner with like hash browns or a baked potato or something like that and um i forget what if there was a dessert or anything but yeah the steak is like the standard interesting what i'm doing i'm getting whole pizza wings and i'm gonna top it off with donuts because i'm allergic to like peanuts and tree nuts so i can i can't have any of the good donut places so yeah. if i'm going out in 15 minutes take the donuts with me um <clears throat> if i was allowed to have alcohol i would have the bottomless tortilla chips from uh, Chili's <laughs> and uh, some Presidente margaritas to go with it. And um, probably like um, a, like the, the biggest, most like sloppiest cheeseburger you can get from wherever. Um, and a steak. Like I can eat a lot, by the way, an alarming amount. So um, <laughs> I would, I would get a, like a, a steak, but like maybe like a, a smaller one from like Texas roadhouse or something with that. And then, I don't know, maybe like something uh, really decadent that I wouldn't usually do, like some lobster or something. And that'd be it. Our editor, slave, whatever you want to call him, says, thoughts on hedging Rivian with SCHD. He's a big Rivian bull, too. Like half his portfolio is in Rivian. Oh, he shouldn't watch my video on Rivian then. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, SCHD is more stable, so I could see that. But I would say consider hedging like with, and again, not advice, but there's such a thing as protective puts, like yeah. for the downside. I would think so, the same thing. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah. All right. What an hour and 19 minutes. This was an absolute pleasure, Coach. Oh, yep. we got one more. Dan says thoughts and thoughts for thoughts and prayers on Rivian. All right. First of all, I want to thank the viewers because half of the show is pretty much you know live questions from you guys. If you guys aren't in here, it's not a fun show. And tonight was a fun show, if you ask me. Um, once again, join all of our Discords. Uh, links will be in the description box. We there is like. If you guys understand the context for these shows, like the buildup throughout the week, it makes it like 10 times more entertaining. Uh, Coach, you know, plug anything you want to again. For sure. Yeah, I've got my channel. Um, just you search for THB Finance. It'll come up. We've got our Brewing Great Returns podcast. And yeah, I think long term for YouTube, I think it's going to be the people that really know their stuff that are going to be the ones that went out in the long run. So, you know, I plan on being around for a while. Oh, ho, ho. We're yeah. here for we're here for a long time and a good time. Exactly. All right. That's right. Thank you all for thank you once again, Coach, for coming in. We, we'll have you on another time for sure. For sure. We got to get like a round table sometime if like something yes. goes down with Khmer. Like there's any breaking news yeah. throughout the week, we got to get a round table. Mm -hmm. um, next week, for everybody, we rather have a guest coming on or a debate, so it'll be a good show. All right. Thank you all for watching. Smash the like button. Subscribe. Follow us on X at Cashflow Kings YT and follow our Twitch now at Cashflow Kings. Twitch.tv slash Cashflow Kings. All right. Thank you all for watching. Smash the like button. Subscribe. Do dividend stocks, not drugs. And of course, remember, Cashflow cash is king. king. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Dissector, you are an idiot. <laughs> <laughs>